welcome to Emma's ESL English. We have adapted slightly. I'm using my, can you see that? Yeah. I'm using my snazzy Korean parasol that I got when I was there. I'm not sure this is a perfect solution, but it'll, it'll manage for now. I wanted to talk to you about something that happened. It actually happened a while ago now, and I did want to make a video about it at the time, but it's kind of, I was kind of traumatized. I think I was kind of really upset about it, so I didn't mention it. Anyway, a while ago, I received a phone call. Now, the problem was this phone call happened late-ish in the evening. I had already had a really busy day teaching and doing some other stuff, and it was after six o'clock when I received this phone call. So I was already really tired and pretty fed up. And I get this phone call and the guy says that he's phoning me from the bank. I'm a little hesitant to tell you this because there are definitely going to be some of you that listen to this and go, God, she's so stupid. I can't believe she fell for it. And yeah, a little, but also millions do. So the reason I wanted to tell you the story is because it's very common and I'm hoping from hearing my story, it may put you on the alert a little bit. And um, I think it's really easy for people my age and younger to think, oh, well, it'll never happen to me. And also, uh, I will know the difference. I will be able to tell. And, and I think if you're somebody who's naturally sort of a little bit negative about the world, or negative about people, then then maybe you could. <laughs> but that's kind of not me. <laughs> I'm really, I'm quite an optimistic person and I always see the best in people. So it doesn't really cross my mind that people are trying to play me or trying to be mean to me because I don't really understand why you would. <laughs> that definitely was a problem <laughs> on this day. So it was about six o'clock, I get a phone call and the guy says that he's phoning me from my bank and someone has hacked into my app and they have already paid for something in Manchester, so it wasn't very far away, for 160 pounds or something and they've set up a direct debit for 200 pounds. So of course straight away I'm thrown into a panic. Oh my god, what? What are you talking about? And the key thing to remember here is that there was nothing weird about it. There was nothing about it that said, this guy is playing you. It wasn't obvious that they were, you know, making stuff up. Like the places they talked about were real places and not very far away. And the things that they were talking about were real, potentially real things that people could do. It all seemed very plausible. And so he kind of set me up in that way and, and got me to the point. So I was already tired and he got me stressed out, right? He really, first thing he did was get me really, really stressed out and really worried and telling me like, have you shared your details with anybody? Does anybody know your information? All that kind of stuff. And then eventually he put me onto a second guy who phoned me back. There's a warning sign. And he was from the fraud team in the bank, supposedly. And he was again talking me through everything, checking everything. Have you given anybody your numbers? So it sounds really legit. They did a very similar security check to what the bank would do. And they were using all the right terms and they were not saying anything that would really set off your warning bells at all until really, really late in the game. And I was on the phone with them for over an hour and all the time they were checking things and making sure things were okay and let me just check this and let me just check that and let me ask you about this and it was all things that you would say that's what a fraud team should do a fraud team should check these things and a fraud team should ask you these questions and it wasn't anything worrying the only problem was towards the end what kind of got my back up eventually I had had one of these phone calls before and luckily I'd phoned my parents and they had told me it's a scam put the phone down because they watch daytime TV which is where all the scam TV shows are all the warnings for the scams are on daytime TV and I don't watch daytime TV <laughs> so my parents knew anyway this time I didn't phone my parents I didn't have a need to phone my parents he asked me can you go and check your password 
check that your password is in the place that you think it is to make sure that nobody's taken your password. I need to know that nobody's taken your password. It sounds good, right? I need to know that nobody's taken your password. It sounds like he cares about you. I went to do, and I said, I'm not going to tell you it because that's what happened the last time. And so I'm not going to do that. Then he had me go onto my app and read him some numbers from my app. At this point, at this point, the warning bells should have been going off a lot louder than they were. But as my mum said, they sort of groomed me. Like really everything that they said, they worked hard to keep me agitated to the point that I was stressed out enough that I wasn't thinking straight. And simultaneously saying all the right things to make me feel like I was being taken care of, to make me feel like the people I was talking to were on my side. And it was only really at the last leg that I was like, this is getting too weird. Like, why do they want these numbers? Why do they want this stuff? And at that point, I really felt like I was feeling really bad. Like, I want to put the phone down on these guys. And this is the fraud team from the bank. Like, oh, I feel so bad. I feel like I'm going to, you know, I don't want to upset anybody putting the phone down on them. But it just got too worrying for me. So eventually I did put the phone down on them. And then <laughs> here's where the story gets worse. I phoned my bank. And this is another thing that you need to know is if you phone your bank, if you're in a, like a house phone, they can connect to your phone line. So you think you're phoning out and you're actually not, you're still phoning them again. If you're phoning them, your bank from your smartphone, your mobile, then you should either turn off your mobile or put it into flight mode and that will break any connections that you have with them. And then you can phone your bank. I put the phone down on them and then I phoned my bank and I phoned my bank and I was talking to my bank and I said, look, I've been on the phone to these guys. They said they were your fraud team. It just sounded a little weird. And I just wanted to check that I have actually been on the phone to the fraud team. And this lady goes away, checks her file. She said, oh yeah, yeah, you have, you have. And I said, oh God, th thank goodness for that. And I said to her, can you do me a favor and just write a note on the system that I'm really sorry that I put the phone down on them. And she said, oh yeah, yeah, no problem, no problem. And so here I go thinking, oh, calm down now. Brilliant, perfect. They were the fraud team, everything's fine. So they told me, in that phone call that they were going to close my card down and send me a new card and it would be a few days so it was about three or four days later and I was thinking British postal system cards got stuck in the mail that's what it is and my mum said you know what I think you should just phone the bank again just phone them again and double check fine and I'm phoning the bank thinking oh, I shouldn't know what she's talking about so I phone the bank and I talk to the bank and the lady on the bank goes quiet and she says you said that they, um, they said they would send you out another card. And I said, yeah, yeah. And she said, yeah, I don't see anything on the system about sending you a new card. And I was like, huh? She says, yeah, yeah, don't, don't panic. Just, um, give me a minute. I'm just going to check some stuff for you. She goes and she looks around, she looks around. She said, she comes back. She says, so you said someone told you that it was from our fraud team. And I said, yeah, that's right. I phoned the bank and she told me it was from the fraud team. She says, yeah, I can see that note here but you haven't been talking to our fraud team. And I was like, <laughs> no, no. She, she explicitly said, I was talking to the fraud team. What do you mean? And she said, yeah, yeah, just um, give me a few more minutes. Give me a few more minutes. And she comes back a little while later and she said, um, did you take out a loan? I said, no, I did not take out a loan. <laughs> no, I definitely didn't. And she said, yeah, there's a 12,000 pound loan on your account. Huh? What? And then the panic started. <laughs> My panic was very delayed. <laughs> so what had happened is that they had told me that somebody had got into my app and they had used me to get into my app. So they were on the internet getting into my account and getting everything double checked and cleared through the app using me, the idiot, <laughs> to clear everything through the app. So they told me exactly what they were doing as if someone else had already done it and they were now preventing me from doing, but actually they were doing exactly that. So part of this that's so galling is that they so don't care about you that they're actually making fun of you while they're doing this, which is just, <laughs> insult to injury and so they had used me gone online 
used the codes that I had given them online to clear stuff and applied for a loan. And what this other lady had seen and she thought was the fraud team was they had changed my income level to a higher income level so they could get a higher loan. And the next step that they didn't get to complete was moving the money out of my account. And the, the lady, the second lady I spoke to said, you're very lucky that they didn't get that far because that would have been much more difficult to deal with. As it is, everything was fine. Everything was shut down, but nobody had any access to my app. So that was fine. I've changed all the passwords and everything now anyway. And we were able to cancel the loan and that's all gone back now. I have more money in my account than I've ever had in my life. It was terrifying. <laughs> I said to the ladies, the one time that I'm really, really glad that I don't have that much money in my account, please take it back. I don't want it. I don't want it anymore. So the things that I want to tell you to know is number one, when your bank says they'll never phone you, they really do mean it. Even in a disastrous situation, they will never phone you. So if somebody phones you and tells you it's the bank, they're lying. It's not the bank. <laughs> so there's your first warning. Secondly, check your phone. My bank actually sent me a message about half an hour before these people phoned me to tell me that someone was trying to access my account and that I should phone the bank. And of course I was busy, so I didn't notice the message until I was on the phone with these guys. And at that time I dismissed it. I didn't even read the full message. I just dismissed it. It was like, oh, well, I'm on the phone to you now. So that's fine. That's great. And actually at the bottom of the message, it says, we will never phone you to talk about this message. <sighs> It's right there in the writing. I'm not kidding when I say I felt very, very stupid. So first thing, your bank will never phone you. That seems daft. It seems like they should phone you in an emergency. And I have had a bank phone me before. But what they're telling you is in this situation, they're probably never going to phone you. If anybody asks you for codes, passwords, anything like that, it's not the bank. The bank will never ask you for codes and passwords. There are specific things that they do to check who you are asking for a code on your phone is not it. When I set up the new names and stuff later, and I was actually talking to the fraud team, he basically dismissed me and said, go do that by yourself. He didn't want to have any codes. He didn't want me to put anything in while I was on the phone with him at all. I was able to do it myself through the internet. So even that point where he was clearing and setting up new things all he had to do was say yes she can set up a new name for herself but actually there were no codes or anything so all kinds of codes are a no they're not going to happen and the other thing the bank said is if they phone you and it looks like it's your bank's number like the name comes up it's not necessarily their number because they can basically hack that. What she said is that they can make it look like that. So even if it phones and it says on it, your bank's name on the phone number that's phoning you, that doesn't mean it's your bank that's calling. And what she said to me is that every interaction with your bank should be in your control and you should feel safe and secure and how you want to do it basically. So what she said is even if your bank phones you and even if they want to talk to you don't worry about putting the phone down on them you should you should feel very comfortable to put the phone down on them and phone them back at the bank yourself because it should be your comfort level that's managed and so basically what she said is never feel uncomfortable about putting the phone down on your bank they don't mind they'll be okay with it they would rather that you felt comfortable so for me that was really important I really needed to hear that <laughs> that it was okay to put my phone down on people. <laughs> it's like <laughs> not okay from my perspective. So that's another thing. And then, as I said, when you do phone your bank, make sure that you have put your phone in flight mode or turned it off and turn it back on again before you phone them. I really hope that my terrible experience can prevent you from having a similar terrible experience. This is the second time that I've had someone phone me and try to scam my money out of my account. And I can tell you that both times, I totally believed them. I totally believed them. Part of me questioned it, but they were so businesslike 
They knew all of the way that the bank speaks to you. They had, the first time they had a lot of my information, the first time they actually read to me my mother's maiden name and a few other bits of information that are relevant when it comes to my banking. So they already had some of my information and that really was the thing that made me trust them because they gave me that information. So the main point that I wanna to get across to you is that it is way too easy to trust these guys and you you really can't so always be on your guard and if the bank phoned you they didn't <laughs> someone else did and it doesn't matter how nice they sound it doesn't matter how much they sound like they want to make you solve all your problems and make everything better they're probably lying to you and they're really really good at it and put the phone down because the bank won't mind if it is them. And I hope this never happens to you. <laughs> That's my key point. I really hope this never happens to you because it sucks. It was a really, really scary for a while there. So I hope this never happens to you. <laughs> All right, see you next time, bye.